time and talk about bugs that we want in our garden, Holly. There's a buku. There's a bunch of them in your garden that you want or you want to have in your garden. We're going to tackle eight of them here. And we'll start out with the most popular one, which would be ladybugs. Yep, ladybugs, um, they eat a lot of things, mostly aphids, white flies, fleas, and the Colorado potato beetle. And a lot of people have ish- major issues with those. So that's definitely something that you want to, you want to have in your garden. Um, they can consume more than 5,000 aphids during their lifetime. They live about three years. So that's a lot of aphids. Now, you, there's some ways you can bring them in. Now, people will often buy ladybugs and release them in the garden. However, that doesn't mean that they're going to stay in the garden uh, when you release them in your garden. No, there's different theories that you can release them in the evening. You do it after you've watered the plants. That way, they're, they generally stay. There's no guarantee, though. So one thing you could do is you could plant plants or flowers or what have you that attract the ladybugs and that includes anything from dill dandelion um yellow fern leaf a flower called basket of gold and then um common yarrow and all of these things will attract the ladybugs so that that's one thing that you can do and you know you if you can keep them in by natural by bringing them in they're more uh capable of staying Rather than just buying them from the online supplier and then just releasing them into your 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 garden, so nat- nature providing them is is the best solution. Uh, the next one is another most popular one, which is the pollinating the the bee, the bumblebee or the honeybee. Sure, the bee. So the bees do pollinate a lot of plants, a number of plants, to help the growth of the plants. So. Yeah, they, they pollinate. I mean, pretty self-explanatory what the bee does, yeah. <laughs> right. So you can you can attract the bees by planting a variety of, there's a lot of bee, bee mix, seed mixes out there that you can purchase. You can attract them that way. You can make a little bead bath. And what the way you make the bead, bee bath is you take some rocks, like little small rocks, put them in a shallow dish, put water in that dish, and that way they have a place to land and they can drink the water and that attracts them. And then, obviously, just um, providing them something to want to pollinate. And, and we've really never, ever done a bee flower bed. Uh, we've got a number of flowering plants, the, the peppers, the eggplants, the tomatoes. Yes, they are self-pollinating, but the bees go in there and pollinate. And cucumbers, they come in by the groves to pollinate the cucumbers that we have growing in our garden. So a very popular, um, easy an- uh, insect to, to bring in. So worms, worms are amazing. Not, they're not necessarily a, a bug, but they are very worthy of this list. Yes, yeah, so worms are an amazing creature. They aerate the soil. They break down organic matter. And then when they break down that organic matter, they add compost to the soil or their own worm waste. Um, worm, what are they called? Worm castings. Worm castings. Um, they do move. They So they, they produce... Up to, a th- is it an eighth of their pound? Yes. An eighth of a pound of waste per year, which is a lot if you think about it for one little worm. And then also, they circulate the soil, the organic matter from eight feet down. So that that's the worms. Now, praying mantises, it depends on the geographical area that you're in, but they are very popular in the southern areas. Um, they can eat a variety of prey uh, ranging from caterpillar, caterpillars, moths, to beetles, to gnats, and uh, even crickets. Uh, they are, are attracted by tall grass, shrubs, marigolds, dill, cosmos. Uh, we had them very popular, uh, v- very frequently in the garden where I was uh, grew up in southern Illinois. And you can buy the eggs and have them hatch uh, pretty much anywhere, but based on the conditions of how cold your winter is, they may not sustain the life and you have to, to bring them back. Uh, the next year. So now, so now we have, um, yeah, so mantis are interesting. I've never seen one. I don't think myself, they don't, they don't grow here. Um, so spiders are another one and they can eat and they're good for your home too, but they can eat bed bugs, aphids, roaches in the garden. They'll eat grasshoppers, mosquitoes, and fruit flies. Definitely something you want in the garden. You don't want to try to get them out if you see spider webs. Right, no, you want to work sure. around them. Yeah, and so they like the tall, like taller plants, 
um, possibly even trellises because that way they have a way to weave. So if they want to weave a web, they want to have like a two, you know, two points so that they can, they can weave that web. Uh, soldier beetles, uh, they eat grasshoppers, eggs, aphids, soft bodied insects attracted by goldenrod, zinnias, marigolds, and, uh, lindered trees. Um, so those are very beneficial. Uh, and the soldier beetle does not damage plants and it cannot, and it doesn't harm humans. So that's even a bigger bonus. Another one is the ground beetle. This is an interesting, uh, bug to have in your garden. So yeah, they prey on, they prey on a lot of stuff. Um, looks like some sort of wormy stuff here. Slug, uh, slugs, caterpillars, ants. People have ants. This yeah. would be, and, and, and Colorado potato beetle. That's another one. Yep. And then cutworms and those can be, a problem. They like the more scent flowers, so that would include evening primrose, amaranthus, and clover. And they're typically active only at night. Uh, if you are fortunate enough to have clover in your yard, you will see some activity of these uh, specific uh, animal or the bugs. And you know, keep in mind that we mention all of these. There are ways in which you can purchase these and bring into your property however disclaimer make sure that the your municipality your state your region fill in the blank that it is legal for you to actually do such because there are some uh, restrictions on what certain so certain states yeah, yeah they don't well, want wow. you bringing yeah. in certain insects or whatever because company a will sell you right. anything it's your responsibility to follow the the laws that are set forth to um, either release or not release right uh, let's talk about the uh, eighth one here, Holly. The pirate bugs. I'm not super familiar with these, but they are interesting. So they eat spider mites. They'll eat insect eggs, caterpillars, aphids, and then thrip. Thrip are a, a type of um, aphid, leachy kind of bug. Um, all, all of these bugs are eating the insects that devastate a lot of our crops. Yeah, for sure. That's why they're they're beneficial. Um, they're attracted to caraway, fennel, alfalfa, uh, spearmint. And then goldenrod. And so if you, you usually know if you have goldenrod in your garden because that's something that you might be allergic to. It's a common allergen. Um, but they do, they, whether they're immature or adult, they do prey on those insects. And, and keep in mind that dill is this, dill is a very popular, attractive, uh, attractive plant for these insects. But dill can be very invasive if you allow it to go to seed, even a few plants. Uh, we fought that in the front yard and continued to fight it in the front yard, and they were in containers about nine years ago, and we continue to have hundreds, if not thousands, of plants come up because that we let a lot of stuff go to seed and we didn't catch other stuff. So dill also can is labeled an invasive species in some uh, states in the, in the, in America, so beware of that. So th- there's eight really good beneficial insects here that you want in your garden. Yeah. So thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to our show. This is our 14th show of 2020. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.